But first, this morning, our etiquette expert, Diane Gottsman, has a great idea to bring friends together virtually. You can host a tea party online. So here are some tips and ideas from Diane and the Dumbarton House, one of her favorite tea spots in Georgetown. Hi, San Antonio Living viewers, Diane Gottsman here, and today I am excited to invite you to tea. I want you to be my guest today at a virtual tea party, so I want to share some tips with you on how you can host your own virtual tea party. I love to travel, I love to go to D.C. during the fall, and since I'm missing it, I reached out to Mary Lesher at Dumbarton House in Georgetown, D.C. She's the program manager, and they have, if you haven't checked it out, you need to go to their website. They have all kinds of virtual offerings along with tea right now. I think the next one is November. But we were talking about how she does her teas during this season virtually. And you know what she did? She surprised me with a can of their signature tea. And as a gracious host, I want you when you have your own tea party, even if it's people in other states or other towns, to send them something that's going to get them excited about the tea. Send them a tea recipe, send them a bag of candied nuts that you made, send them the special tea that you will be serving at your tea party. Remember, you're all going to be separate, but you'll all be sitting at a camera with your own tea service set up. So Mary sent me this tea and oh my gosh, it smells so good. It smells it smells oaky, it smells woodsy, it's perfect for the fall season. She also sent me her invitation, which is a postcard of what Dumbarton House looks like. So based on that, I set up my tea table to make it very proper. And so I have some pastries. I didn't put sandwiches out, but you could if you wanted to. And one thing that you always see at a tea party is something called a scone or a scone. So some people call it scone. The the correct way to say it is scone, which rhymes with gone. So there's your tea etiquette tip. And you can talk about that during your tea conversation with your friends and family. Another etiquette tip when it comes to a tea party is you never hold your saucer and your cup when you're seated at a table. You only hold your cup and your pinky stays down. You don't raise your pinky, it stays down. Who would have known? If you think you're having a high tea, which is a very fancy tea, it's really not. That is a very informal tea It's in the evening. It's when you come home from a busy day, you've worked all day, and you're served very heavy foods. The most appropriate, formal, proper tea is an afternoon tea, and that's something that you would see here. Um, you could have a tea caddy, and you could have sandwiches on your tea caddy, and you could have pastries, but feel free to eat everything with your fingers because tea food is finger food. Now, of course, if you're serving cake, you'd want to use a fork. You pass all of your foods to the right counterclockwise when you're sitting with people at a table, but right now, since it's virtual, you are sitting alone and you get to eat everything yourself, but that doesn't mean that you take things for granted. It means that you still set a beautiful table because your guests are going to just be awe-inspired by what they see. You're going to dress appropriately for tea, so wear something that's fancy, seasonal, something that's going to make you and your guests smile. And you're gonna set out decorations, one of my favorites, set out decorations that you can actually talk about and discuss. This is one of my little favorite things. I buy these every year, oops, and they're little pumpkins. They look like little pedophores. They're very inexpensive. And you can just put things out that you enjoy that are also very pretty for the table. When you're serving your tea, this again, remember, is loose tea. So you would use a strainer. This is a tea strainer. You put the strainer over your teacup and you would pour your tea into the teacup and the strainer would catch the tea leaves that would then go back into the tea strainer. But feel free to use a tea bag in your teacup. You would just put the tea bag in the teacup. You wouldn't keep the bag in the teacup and drink. You would let the tea steep for about three minutes and then what you would do is you would use your spoon to help you and you would take the tea bag and put it on a saucer. You would not take the tea string and twist it around the spoon. That's actually bad manners. There are so many things that are fun to talk about. There are 
ideas that you can share with your friends. There's recipes that you can share with your friends. Another good idea, and this is what Mary does at her teas at Dumbarton House, is she sends the recipes in advance and then she actually cooks while the participants are there. And after she cooks and puts everything in the oven, she enjoys her food. They enjoy theirs because they're either watching and have already pre-made it or they're doing it together. So, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you can celebrate with friends. A tea party is meant to be shared. So you can, you can share it with somebody in your home, you can share it with a family member, or you can just share it with yourself. There's nothing better than sitting by yourself in the afternoon on a cool afternoon and enjoying a simple cup of tea. Follow me at Diane Gottsman on Instagram, Protocol School of Texas on Facebook, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Well, I'm inspired to have some tea this afternoon. Diane, so perfect. Right? I, know. I love that. Whenever we talk about tea, I feel like I can bring out my British accent. Absolutely, you can. Right. Well, <laughs> maybe we should stop while we're still ahead.